Lucille Ball. Co-starring Gail Gordon. can I do for you? I stopped by to pick up my dividend statement. Ah, yes. Well, my secretary has your files. So you'll be right back. Fine. Uh, do you do you smoke cigars, Mr. Mooney? Yes, yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> May I have one? <laughs> Thank you. Jack Benny always pulls that on me. <laughs> Very fun. Well, you know, Jack Benny. Some actors have to be on all the time. Uh, so I've heard. Oh, that could be very annoying. I could never be like that. I think it's unprofessional. I say once an actor walks off the stage, he should leave his work there. Be like everybody else. Uh, very commendable. I've learned to relax. Like Irving Berlin said in that song many years ago. Lazy, I want to be lazy. Uh, I want to just lay in the sun with no work to be done. Yes, I remember that. Ooh, under that awning they call the sky. <laughs> Stretching and yawning, you let the world go drifting by. Yeah, well, I want to peep in the deep tangle wildwood, counting sheep while I sleep like a childhood with a great big police full of books to read while it's peaceful while I'm killing time, being lazy now, Mr. Mooney. <laughs> Maybe I can find your file, Mr. Burns. It should be here under the bees. All right, Martin, Miller, Munson, Murph. <coughs> <laughs> under the bees? <laughs> Maybe we'd better wait for my secretary. I uh, hope you don't mind waiting. Think nothing of it. Now that I'm not doing an act anymore, all I've got is time on my hands. <laughs> you and me all. Nothing but love in you. And if I fall, once and for all, I'll see my dreams come true. Moments to spare for someone who oh, can't Excuse fall. me, uh, Mr. Burns. Yes, oh, I was here, uh, ma'am. Uh, 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 because I have uh, on my hands. You and my hands. Mr. Mooney, don't be embarrassed. Nobody ever lets me finish a song. Uh, all right. Would you care for another cigar? Oh, no, no. Go right on with your work. I'll just sit here and look at the stock report. Oh, yes. My, I envy you, Mr. Burns. How's that? Well, being able to retire in the prime of your life. Just sit back and to collect dividends. Well, that, that might be true about some people, but not about me. Huh? It kills me not to be doing an act. Well, why did you stop working? Well, I've always liked to work with women. I had a great act going with Carol Channing, and then she left me. She went into Hello, Dolly. And then I did an act with Dorothy Brobine, and then and, and she went into television. And Connie Stevens went into pictures. Well, why don't you find some other girl to work with you? Mr. Mooney, comedians are not that easy to find. Got to find a girl with a kind of a pixie personality, eccentric, way out, a real kook. A girl like that is very, very hard to find. <laughs> you got here, I've been trying to find Mr. Burns' pile. Oh! Oh, George Burns! How do you do? Oh, you've been a favorite of mine for years. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh I used to watch you all the time on radio. <laughs> you watched me on radio? I mean, I, I, I used to listen to you on television. <laughs> Television. Yeah, that was the year my picture tube went out. Oh. <laughs> you should have gone back to watching me on radio. Ah! Oh, you say the funniest thing. Where's this time I go? <laughs> I've been trying to find Mr. Burns' file. It is not under the B's. Oh, I must have put it under the X's. <laughs> Why would you put the B file under the X's? Well, that poor little file never has anything in it. <laughs> Well, where is it? Well, now, I don't know. Wait a minute. Uh, oh, I bet I know what I did. 
<laughs> you see, Mr. Burns, I always have trouble remembering names, so I took a course in word association. Now, Burns reminds me of fire. So you filed it under the F? No. No, fire reminds me of stove. So you put my file under the S's? <laughs> no, stove reminds me of pot roast. <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> You filed it under the peas? No, pot roast reminds me of noodles. Mrs. Carmichael, you're making me angry. <laughs> making me hungry. <laughs> and noodles reminds me of my mother. It's your turn. <laughs> noodles remind you of your mother? Yeah, she made the best noodles, and I'll bet that's where I put your file. Under noodles? No, under gravy. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. I know what I'm going to do with her. Start a whole new career. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael. Yes, sir. Have you ever thought about going on the stage? Oh, all my life. <laughs> how, how would you like to do an act with me? Oh, Mr. Burns, you can't be serious. I know it. That's why I want to get back on the stage. <laughs> oh. What do you say? Oh, well, that's very nice of you, Mr. Burns, but I couldn't do that. I, I couldn't quit my job here. Why not? <laughs> because it wouldn't be fair to you, Mr. Mooney. You need me. Good help is hard to find. Well, I'd be delighted to start looking. <laughs> Well, Mrs. Carmichael, this is a great opportunity for you to make a lot of money. Yes, I, I know it does sound like a wonderful opportunity. Yeah. But, oh, and you know, today, my horoscope said that my, my whole future was going to take a turn for the better. So did mine. <laughs> oh, uh, how much would I make? Well, it's, 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 it's unprofessional for an artist to discuss money. Oh. That's usually handled by your agent or someone who handles your financial matters. Oh, oh, well, Mr. Mooney usually handles all my financial things. Oh, yes, yes, and I'd be delighted to represent you in this matter. Would you? Yes, indeed. For the customary, 20%. 10% is customary. <laughs> oh, 10. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you see, I, I'm new to show business. <laughs> You two talk it over, and when you decide on what you want, you can get together with my agent. Fine, fine. Uh, here's my address. Be at my apartment tonight, and we can start rehearsing. Your apartment? <laughs> nice and quiet there, and nobody will bother us. <laughs> well, I, uh, I hardly know you, Mr. Burns, and going to your apartment, uh, you, you in show business and all. Mrs. Carmichael, you don't have to worry about a man like Mr. Burns. She does, too. Well, I didn't mean that you aren't a gentleman, Mr. Burns. I just meant that... Well, I meant you're a man, and if I go to your apartment, people might talk. What people? There won't be any people then. And when I talk, nobody believes it anymore. Okay, Mr. Burns. Okay, Bye, Mr. Burns. Well, thank you. Bye, Mr. Moore.